Constructing a Minecraft mega build is one of the most insane and time consuming projects you can take on in the entire game. But despite this huge challenge, players have continued to push the limits with their unique creations. And today, we'll be looking at how they've evolved over Minecraft's decade long history, starting in 2009. When the game was initially released, there was an extreme lack of blocks to build with, yet this didn't stop players' imagination. From Mario pixel arts, basic castles, to square houses, we would start to see players experimenting and trying out different architects. But it wouldn't be until six months after the game's release, we would see the first ever mega build. EC Rider designed this cathedral in a creative server which manages to look simplistic yet extremely detailed and huge at the same time. The fact that there was such a limited block selection, you could only build from Y0 to Y64, and he still managed to make something like this just goes to show how revolutionary it was for its time. But EC Rider, he, he wasn't done yet, because just a month later, he would recreate the Swedish parliament house in the entire area surrounding it in Minecraft. Compared to most players just making random Obama pixel arts in strange houses, EC Rider went a step further by making several giant buildings united into this one single city. From one-to-one -one scale canals, beautiful decoration, and even these extremely realistic looking benches, this mega build is something I'd be impressed by even if I saw it today. To make something this insane without world data in such limited blocks definitely makes EC Rider the most OG builder in the game's history. Unfortunately, this one man carrying the building community would disappear, leaving it to the rest of the players to carry on his legacy. Along with this, several new building blocks were being added to the game, most importantly, wool, which allowed people to build things like this giant earth and just some all around crazy looking creative servers. But the biggest addition of them all would be in 2010 when the height limit was doubled from 64 to 128, which would lead to a player named Halkun making the craziest mega build the game has seen yet. This is a one to one scale model of the Starship Enterprise from the show Star Trek, built up of thousands of blocks all placed precisely with hand by this one player. No world edit it's no hacks, all grind. With the old Minecraft fog and the ship itself towering over the player, this just looks absolutely insane, but what if I told you this was only the structure's framework? Halkun would continue work on this project over the next few months, and would finally achieve his goal of creating the Starship Enterprise in Minecraft, making history in the world of building. Now, going into 2011, Minecraft would start increasing in popularity exponentially, and since players now knew what this game was capable of, crazy builds were no longer a one-off occurrence. One of these was WB sees Whiteberg, a huge detailed city constructed by one person. Oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Isn't this modern day Minecraft right here? Well, yeah, this is what the mega build looks like today, but it was actually started over 10 years ago in 2011 and has been passionately worked on by the creator ever since. Just seeing the change in blocks, building methods, and architecture shows sometimes builds are just more than cubes, but instead have entire stories. Another historic build that started in 2011 and has been continuously upgraded ever since is Minecraft's tutorial world. Starting off as just a simple introduction to the game by Mojang, the tutorial world went from just a few houses, castles, and a couple redstone inventions to getting better and better looking as the game progressively updated. Also during 2011, we would see Minecraft's major addition of redstone, which would lead to some super interesting builds. From Seth Bling's working Donkey Kong in Minecraft, Hans Lemerson's ancient version of playing Minecraft in Minecraft in this two-player working redstone pong machine, these weren't necessarily mega builds, but what they did show is a whole new creative side of the game that could be used in even larger projects. Now, although the mega builds we've seen so far have been pretty crazy for their time, they are all about to be completely one-upped by the scaling and spectacle of Imperial City. Regarded today as one of Minecraft's greatest builds, in 2013, architects came together to construct this monumental city, which unlike any other mega build during its time, it's so massive you can literally get lost just admiring the beauty of it. Being roughly a 1600 by 1600 map, it feels like buildings are just infinitely generating out of thin air, each being intricately designed and built no matter where you go. Not only are the builds themselves insane, but the creators didn't take the easy way out and actually furnished almost every interior. And honestly guys, if there was any Minecraft map I could live in, it'd be this one. Now that was a gigantic city, but what about an entire one-to-one -one recreated country for you to find your own house in? Well in 2014, a government official of Denmark saw his son building a house in Minecraft and he thought, wait, wait, hold up, this could be an uncommon Denmark W. Let's simulate our entire country in Minecraft. And just like that, a server consisted of over four trillion trillion blocks was created, taking up over a terabyte of space, allowing any Denmark citizens to log on and upgrade their own houses in the game. It's my pleasure as Denmark president to say we have made our whole country in Minecraft! Yeah! Uh, everybody run! Oh my god! 
unfortunately, this turned out to be a common Denmark L, as Americans actually raided the server with the forgotten TNT minecarts and built tanks and flags over the innocent house ruins, which caused Denmark to take the server down. But this whole thing had me thinking, if you truly wanted to grief Minecraft's biggest bills, then you yourself would need a military mega build. So to see what that looks like, I brought two artillery experts, Pingu and Cade, together, and whichever one of them wins an intense 1v1 with their builds gets $1,000. Three, two, one. On the desert side, we got Team Pingu, representing today's sponsor, War Thunder, with a bunch of several redstone builds matching exactly what you can pilot and control inside of War Thunder, like the Panzer 1S, the Little Bird, and Yak 141. Then on the other side, we got Cades, representing Minecraft. It's just a giant cube filled with a bunch of deadly weapons. Oh gosh, what is it doing? Oh god, big cannon! Yo, what the heck? War Thunder is a free multiplayer game about fighting other players with a range of military ground vehicles, aircraft, and naval vessels, all on your favorite devices, just like you see in this battle right now. This is crazy. Look at this jet rolling in, though. War Thunder has also just dropped a bunch of new map locations to their catalog, like Pyrenees. Guys, hold on for a second. I'm trying to record an ad, please. And with the winter variants and visual effects of the game itself, it genuinely looks fun and realistic. Drive it, ride it, ride it, ride it. He's on. <laughs> Yeah, you can't really drive a jet in Minecraft, but in War Thunder, you can strategically rip those babies for miles. No way. Dang, there's no way. That's insane. And there you go, Caves. That's $1,000. You need to download War Thunder for free from the link in the description right now. Because all new players and those who haven't entered War Thunder for six months or more will receive half a million silver lions, three premium vehicles, XP boosters, and so many other bonuses you will not regret getting. Now, as we go into 2015, the Minecraft player base has reached all-time highs, and with the game now having so much more blocks and features compared to when it was released, it didn't take long for one group of builders to innovate and push the limit of mega builds. This is the entirety of Harry Potter recreated in Minecraft, and I don't mean just a Hogwarts build. I mean broomsticks that are sweeping themselves, custom recreated graphics, London, magic, the entire playable story, and more all completely done in unmodded Minecraft. Because command blocks and data packs were getting popular, popular around this time, the Fluid Network mixed them with a series of mega builds to create a playable Harry Potter story. The map starts off with this super cool owl cinematic, then you found out you just got accepted into Hogwarts with a letter. From there, there's an entire story to play, from interacting with the movie's characters, fighting off custom bosses, and exploring gigantic cities. Even just playing this for 10 minutes, I felt like I was in a completely different game. Because of how intricate, detailed, and just insane this creation is, it easily takes the spot as the most insane mega build made in Minecraft to this point. Alright, so going into 2016, players would continue building insane cities, castles, and adventure maps, but there was one interesting category of building that was getting popular during this time. Slimestone. With the addition of slime just a few years prior, players could now bring their builds to life in vanilla Minecraft with the use of pistons and slime blocks. And it didn't take long for players to push the limits of what was thought to be possible. A player by the name of Cube Hamster started an underground competition called the SBRT, where geniuses in the community would create massive controllable slimestone robots to fight against each other. The goal was to either kill the other opponent's pilots or completely destroy their contraption using all of the weapons inside your own. Like just looking inside one of these slimestone mega builds is confusing, but somehow all of this plays a key role in the robot's functionality. From strategically deploying TNT minecart missiles to sending out arsenals of sophisticated carpet bombers, all of which is done while the robot is moving at the same time. Staying on the topic of technical mega builds, in 2017 a player by the name of Mr. Squishy recreated the entirety of the game Pokemon Red inside of Minecraft. All of these command blocks, pixel arts, and numbers you're seeing on screen right now somehow act as code inside of Minecraft, and they all come together to create the whole game of Pokemon Red, all able to be played on this Game Boy. It was difficult for me to understand the scale of this project until I heard that it took over 357,000 custom command blocks in over a year and a half to complete this historic invention. Now, compared to the mega build projects we saw in the earlier years versus now, it's clear with the new updates and players innovating, the creations have gotten undoubtedly more insane. And what better way to appreciate this than by looking at Blockworks 10 year Minecraft anniversary build. When Minecraft turned a decade old, Mojang went to Blockworks and asked them to create a tribute for the game's birthday, and they definitely over delivered. The map starts in a small desert temple village, where you can take a minecart through a history museum that shows all of Minecraft's update progression. Once you get to the end, you're welcomed with the main attraction, the entire mega build. Built up of 
four main parts. This beautiful build features museums, giant recreations of in-game items, and all of the blocks added to this day connected inside of this one massive theme park. There's loads of different easter eggs relating back to Minecraft, and even a few secret items Mojang added in just for this map. Like this disc called a golden record, where you can hear the developers singing happy birthday. Now, there's one thing in common about all of these mega builds so far though, they're made in creative. But players on the Sidecraft SMP who are known for pushing survival mode to its absolute limits built one of the largest and most insane Minecraft farms to ever exist. Dug out in 2020 using TNT bomber planes, this giant perimeter holds this mob farm platform that is designed to only generate creepers, which teleports them automatically into the nether to be killed. Because they mined out such a clear space, it forces all of the creepers to spawn in this single area, causing the farm to bring in over 1 million gunpowder per hour. But the coolest part is, is it's more than just a farm in a perimeter. They even went a step further by scaling and designing the entire thing in a particular way. So if map arts are taking up the whole area, it creates this iconic picture of a creeper peeking through a wall. By the way, this is just one of the insane mega builds constructed on the Sidecraft server. They've done so much more impossible things that years ago, people in creative couldn't even have built. So now we've seen giant recreations of creepers and items, but what about a big piston? This is Lord John's 384 by 384 by 384 recreation of a redstone piston, which in itself is a mega build, but the craziest part is it actually extends and retracts. Inside of the gigantic contraption is filled with different redstone and slimestone components that when activated will work in unison to extend the piston, which will take a total of 10 hours to run a full course. All right, so from this point, all the mega builds we've seen so far can be considered works of art, taking advantage of the vast blocks, features, and imagination Minecraft now offers. But by far, one of today's most beautiful builds are done by a player named Roman who specializes in creating gigantic dragons. From ones literally going up to the sky limits to a recreation of the Steve and Alex Ender dragon fights built multiple different times, each representing a different scene, all of these could go inside of a museum. Wow, looking back through all these years at what people done is incredible and the most I've ever built is an upside down tea explosion joke at the end of my video. Okay, no more wasting time. I'm I'm gonna change the world.